What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Mm, yes. Someone said they don't like me drinking coffee in the beginning of the episode. It annoys them. Hey, cheers. Mm, mm, delicious. Anyways, check it out. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about what happens during lights out in prison and jail. And do I have some pretty crazy stories to tell you? One of these stories I actually told in the very beginning of this channel. Okay, but I removed it, thing got flagged. I guess I might have been saying, got a little too descriptive on it or said some words I shouldn't have had before I learned about the rules and regulations of a family friendly channel. Okay, now check it out. It's crazy though. It's crazy. And I'm sure 90% of y'all have not heard it or might not even remember me telling it if you were here since the beginning of the channel. But there's also some other things that happen that I've seen when lights go out in prison. Everyone always wonders what's going on, okay? What's, what happens when the lights go out? Do people really shut up? Do they really go to sleep and stuff like that? For the most part, they do. You know, most places I've been in, especially uh, pods with cells, lights go out. People tend to go to sleep on schedule, you know. There might be a few young bucks shooting dice or playing cards within the cell or playing music loud. It just it just depends on where you're at and what kind of people are in the institution. And there's also a lot of sexual activity that happens when the lights go out. And I'm going to tell you two crazy stories, no, actually three crazy stories about that. Okay, so first things first. The lights, when they go out, sometimes it's like 9, sometimes it's 11. I remember I was in a hole one time in the Virginia Beach City Jail. The lights never went out. Never went out. Drove me absolutely insane. I would have to blindfold myself in order to get any kind of sleep. It was some kind of, I swear it was some kind of torture mechanism, man. Having a bright light on in your cell 24-7 would drive you insane. You don't even know what time it is. You know what I mean? The only way you know what time it is is by when they serve trades or mail, you know, something like that. That's the only way you really know what time it is. But for the most part, you know, normal lights out is around like 9, between 9 and 11. People get locked in their cell for the rest of the day. Or if you're in a dorm, and one of the stories I'm going to be telling you is from a dorm, uh, they turn the lights out around 9, 9.30, but people are still roaming around until 11. You know what I mean? It's a, a dorm is nothing but a big, like, hangar with, a hundred bunk beds, you know, so that's like 200 people inside this big gigantic hangar. And when they say lockdown, you think everyone's going to be locking, getting in their bunk and sitting there? Nah, you got people roaming and running and crawling under beds to steal people's stuff. All kinds of stuff happen in the middle of the night in dorms. It all depends on the CO working as well. Some COs, they don't give a damn what you do. You can walk around and play music do push-ups, whatever, gamble. It doesn't matter what it is. If you're in a dorm and the right CO is working, hey, you can do whatever. But for the most part, you know, when lockdown happens, most people shut up and go to sleep. You know, unless it's a weekend, people are acting crazy. And I know some places I've been to, like if you make any kind of noise past a certain time, hey, you might catch a fade as soon as you wake up. Because some inmates, you know, they might be older, institutionalized, they don't like a lot of noise, and that stuff will really piss them off. And you can wake up next morning and catch some hands just because you were screaming to your homeboy six cells down. You know what I mean? For real. People take that stuff seriously in some places. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the first story. The first story has Grizzy involved. That's right. One, uh, More than one time, we were locked up together. We even went to a prison together. And we were actually housed right next to each other, which is very rare because the prison that we were in, it holds thousands of inmates, okay? In order for you to get that close to someone that you know on the streets is very, very rare, you know what I mean? But we have been locked up at the same time, numerous occasions. But anyways, this one time in jail, we were cellmates. And keep this in mind, I was never allowed to get jobs or go to programs or any kind of stuff like that because... I had violent charges. Violent charges and people with over like five years, they can't do these programs in jail. Okay, Violent charges, escape charges, stuff like that. You just can't get any kind of programs or uh, jobs like trustee or anything like that in jail. But like I said in some of my previous videos, I knew this sergeant, okay, this sergeant from the streets. And he looked out for me, okay? He gave me a job, my first and only job, and of course I screwed it up. But check it out. 
I told a story about how I got caught stealing jalapenos and coffee. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. Maybe someone can leave the name of the video in the uh, comment section. Because I can't even remember the title of these videos I'd be making. But anyways, okay, so as soon as I started this trustee job, I started off by pushing carts uh, with trays on them to blocks, all right? And then an upgrade. Someone got kicked off the nighttime floor crew, which was one of the best jobs you could possibly have. And I got bumped up there, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, you know, nighttime floor crew is the people that walk around the whole jail and buff floors. That's all you do is buff floors. Spray, 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 buff, buff, buff with the big old buffers. And it was actually pretty hard work. But the good thing about it is you could walk around the whole part, whatever area they have you at, you could walk up all around it. You know, you can go into any block, especially in this old part called the 87, man. I'll never forget it. And this particular section that I was buffing floors at was where Grizzly's housed. He was housed in this cell block that was, okay, this is how it was. There was, a, there was a long hallway, probably about 75 yards long, okay? And the hallway has cell blocks on each side. And there's a door to go into the cell block, and it's not locked. It's never locked, okay? Because once you open it up, there's like a little uh, walkway for trustees or COs to make the rounds with the flashlights. And then there's bars. And then there's the cells behind the bars. So these doors were never locked. So you could walk right into the block and say what's up to whoever, uh, scream to whoever, pass canteen to someone. Maybe you are go to another block and get some ramen noodles and pass them down to someone. You always got asked by inmates to carry stuff to other blocks. The trustees or nighttime floor crew. That's just how it was. You would see people running back and forth, back and forth. And the COs have no idea what's going on, but really they're passing around contraband, matches, lighters, weapons, whatever the case is. Okay, they're just running back and forth, the trustees. Well, this was nighttime floor crew. It was like 1.30 in the morning. I knew Grizzly was probably asleep, you know what I mean? But I was buffing the floors, and this hallway was long. Remember, it was like 75 yards, and then they had these other cell blocks down another corridor. But it was only like three or four. That was the end of the cell block corridor. So you would go down the hallway, take a right to another hallway, and those were the last cell blocks on there. And that's where Grizzly was, okay? And this place was kind of like, uh, you could do anything over there. There wasn't even, I don't even think there was a camera over there, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people going over there, like trustees would go over there and eat a bunch of food while no one was looking. And that's where they held all the mattresses, all the extra mattresses or pillows or whatever. Not pillows, there was never any pillows, but... Uh, mattresses and boats, the plastic boats that people sleep on when the bunk when there ain't no bunks. So, anyways, it was late night tip, and I was buffing the floors, and the COs were nowhere to be seen. I mean, they were nowhere. I was like, I'm gonna go holler at Grizzly, cause I used to just walk past the uh, cell block. If there was cool COs working, I would go in and just talk to them for a little bit, you know. But usually, Grizzly was asleep, so sometimes I would just open up the door and I'd be like, Grizzly. Grizzy boy, and then close the door and walk off and start buffing floors again. You know what I mean? I was gonna do something like that. So I started walking down this long freaking hallway, take, took the right to go towards uh, Grizzy cell block, and as soon as I made that right hand turn, boom, there's the COs right there. Two male COs making out. Huh? They were freaking getting it on, making it out right there around that corridor. Absolutely unbelievable. Couldn't believe what I was seeing. Thank God they didn't spot me. They probably would have beat me up or threw me in a hole or something. You know what I mean? But anyways, I took a quick turnaround, went back to buffing the floors like nothing ever happened. Went back to the cell block and told everyone I possibly could. You know, no one believed me for real though. They're like, man, you lying, man. They weren't doing that. Because one of the COs was actually a really cool CO, man. And everyone liked him. And I was like, man, I, I swear on everything I love, bro. I saw him making out. You know what I mean? And that's what it was, man. And I never looked at those guys the same. Now, the next story comes from Greensville Correctional Facility. That's right, man. I've told a lot of stories about this. And you can go online, type it in. Greensville, Virginia. There's women COs that are getting locked up for being gang affiliated. Opening up secure doors for gangbangers to uh, attack other inmates. I mean, one time, uh, go read about it. The inmate was attacked and they had emergency flying to the hospital. You know what I mean? Just because the... Woman CO opened up a secure door for the gangbangers. For real, this stuff happens, man. I've made videos on it. Uh, male COs bringing in cell phones, dope, money, real cash money. It's absolutely 
insane. But this one chick, there was a rumor going around in the block that she would make her rounds and do something sexual to one of the inmates when she did her rounds, okay? And even though nobody want to put homeboy's business out there like that and, you know, kind of kept a hush-hush, rumors still spread because there's always someone watching, okay? All themselves, you think someone ain't going to see what homegirl's doing, okay? So rumors spread and uh, every it turned out every time this girl was working, it was like people were waiting for her to do it. It was like some guys even enjoyed watching her do this stuff to another person, okay? So uh, she would make her rounds and she would stop at this one cell. And like I said in some of my earlier videos, the cell doors had these windows. They were about this wide and about this long. And they didn't have no glass. So you could stick your arm through it, uh, anything. You know, if, if there were some trustees out there or someone working, they could pass stuff right through the window. But anyways, the CO, she was starting to do her rounds and she stopped in front of this cell. And you could tell she put her arm in there and started, you know, doing what she had to do to homeboy in the cell. You know, you can see her arm moving faster and all kinds of crazy stuff. And it is what it is. You know, that's another crazy thing that happened during Lights Out that I've witnessed personally. You know, I was like, dang, man, this girl's going hard, for real. The woman COs in Greensville Correction, man, they go harder than the males, my friends. That's right. Stuff is real over there. And, you know, when I saw this stuff happen, I, you know, I thought it was only in the movies. You know, you, you would only think that you would only see this stuff in the movies and then you realize, holy crap. I am living the movie, you know what I mean? I'm living in it. This is the movie, you know? And you see it firsthand, and it's just, it's astonishing, man. It's a whole nother world. You would never think stuff like this happens, but it does. Now, this story that I'm about to tell you is something that happened in jail, and stuff that you would never think happens in jail. You would think it happens more in the penitentiary. And I told this story in my previous video, so I'm going to try to make it a little more uh, kosher. You know what I mean when I'm telling it this time. And you know, in jail in nighttime, a lot of stuff happens, okay? A lot of new people come in the block and you will hear them scream or cry and ask for a deputy, get me out of here. Uh, you know, typical stuff you hear in Shawshank Redemption, you know, like fresh fish and inmates screaming at them and antagonizing them, you know, making it worse and worse. And that stuff really does happen. I've seen people actually, you could hear them whimpering in the cell or calling the CO. Uh, to get them out of there, like their first night in jail. I've seen stuff like that happen. It doesn't happen too often, but there are times where I've heard and seen stuff like that. It's it's crazy. It's crazy to be in a cell hearing other people going through pain like that, misery, and they don't even know that it's actually just making their going to make their time even worse. You know. But anyways, uh, I was in this cell block, and the cell block was overcrowded big time, and I was sleeping. I chose to sleep outside. Okay, like I said in the beginning of this video, the cell block is in, it's in the 87 block, okay, of Chesapeake City Jail. This is what they call the dungeon. And they have these cell doors, and they have the bunks. They have five, I think it was five cells, two-man bunks in each. And then outside on the patio, they have the boats. That's where everyone else sleeps that, you know, when it's overcrowded. And I chose to have the boat, okay, because I was the kind of guy... I did everything at nighttime. I would plug in the TV for the whole block so we could watch uncut and all kinds of crazy videos. Or we would watch cheaters on the regular basis. Man, cheaters. <laughs> hey, a lot of people, they were like, they can't watch cheaters. They, they'll end up hurting themselves watching that show, thinking about what their old lady's doing on the streets. But anyways, I get out of my bed and I walk down the boulevard to take a piss on the toilet. And I uh, come past this cell and I heard a little bit of noise. I was like, who's up? I was wondering who's up at this time of night. So I look in the cell and... Boom! I saw something I never would have expected to see in jail or prison, okay? I haven't even been to prison yet, so this was my first experience seeing something like this. And there was this young dude, i never forget him, man. Hate to put your business out there, homeboy, but this is the truth. His name was Bird. Homeboy was a gangbanger. He played cards with everyone in the cell, you know, me, everybody. He, no one had any idea that, you know, he went this way. But anyways, I'm not going to get into exactly what I saw because I think that's what got... Got me caught up in the video last time. But anyways, I looked in the cell and homeboy was having sexual relations with another man, okay? And this man that he was doing it to, his name was Pitbull, okay? The reason why they called him Pitbull is because his teeth were so jacked up, okay? And not only that, the dude was like 60-some years old, okay? And Birdman was like 28. And the old dude, Pitbull, was like 60-some years old and he was so hairy, okay? This dude was one of the hairiest guys I've ever seen in my life. I'm talking about hair. His hair from his neck to his head to his back didn't stop. It was just like one big patch of fur. And that dude 
was sleeping with that young dude, man, that young gangbanger. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And the next morning, I went to this my homeboy YG. I was tattooing him. He was a one of the uh, higher ranked bloods in the block, and I was doing pluck tattoos on him for a couple weeks. You know what I mean? He was paying me good money. He, he became me and him became pretty close. You know, we would laugh and joke all the time. So I went up to YG. I said, man. And I thought to myself, if I should tell him or not, you know. But I decided to do it. I was like, man, he needs to know. So I went with YG and I said, man, uh, you ain't gonna believe what the freak I saw last night, man. He goes, what? What'd you see? I said, man, you ain't gonna believe it. You're gonna think I'm lying. He goes, what, man? You know, he started getting a little serious now. And I'm like, man, you ain't gonna believe it, man, you know. And then I was like, man, Birdman was sleeping with Pitbull. He goes, hell nah, man. Ain't no way. And uh, I was like, man, I swear I put on everything I love, man. I put on my father above. Homeboy was sleeping with that old hairy man. You know what I mean? And then instantly he goes, Birdman! Birdman! I'm like, oh, damn. You know, I'm like, here we go. And he confronted Birdman, and Birdman was denying everything, man. He's like, man, I put that on my five, dog. I put that on five, bro. I wasn't doing nothing like that. And then he started getting aggressive towards me. And I was like, homeboy, look, I don't have nothing to lie about, dog. You know, I, I saw what I saw. And, you know, long story short, uh, actually, nobody beat him up. For real, he was saved by the bell. I think canteen, something, something happened where he could get out that cell block quick. You know what I mean? But... Before they started getting more angry and angry about the situation, everyone was joking the hell out of them. So I guess the moral of the story is you never know, man. There's undercovers everywhere you go. You know what I mean? All darkness will come to the light sooner or later, my friends. A lot of stuff. And I got other crazy stories about lights going out. And I know this is turned into probably like a 20-minute video. I do apologize, but uh, I'll save those stories for that. I was actually going to tell another story. But yeah, those are some of the craziest things I've seen in jail when it comes to sexuality at nighttime. Believe it or not, when the lights go out, a lot of nasty stuff happens. For real, a lot of nasty stuff happens because no one thinks they're going to be seen. For real. But it goes on long enough, someone's going to spot it. You know, and put you out there. That's just how it goes. Keep your eyes and ears open. Peep the whole scene and whatever's going on around me. Where'd that come from? You know what I mean? Who, who said that? Let's see if any of y'all are smart out there in uh, YouTube land. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, please do so now. Do not forget to check out the links in the description of the video for my merchandise, clothes, sweatshirts, whatever you want. Salute to every last one of y'all who've been supporting me since the beginning and everyone who is just now starting to ride with 23 and 1.